Hey everybody, it's Barb, and today I'm going to show you how to stitch and edit your drawings in Photoshop. Just a quick note before we get started, if this is your first time finding me, don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications so that you don't miss any of my videos. This tutorial is going to show you a really quick way to stitch your drawings together if you've had to scan them in two pieces using Photo Merge in Photoshop. You'll also learn how to clean up your drawings for prints using the clone tool. I'm going to be using Photoshop CC for this tutorial. If you want more information on how to get the program as part of a package or a loan, you can visit adobe.com. When you first open Photoshop and you go to the Create New tab on the left hand side, you're going to get this dialog box that opens. I'm going to create a document that's 14 by 11 at 300 dpi and RGB. You can do CMYK as well, but we're going to leave it in RGB just for the sake of this tutorial. A lot of print-on-demand sites require RGB as the color space, so this will work great for our purposes. We're going to come back to this document in a moment, but right now I'm going to show you how to use Photo Merge. So if you go up to File, and then scroll down to where it says Automate, and then all the way into the next menu here to the bottom where it says Photo Merge. It's going to bring up another window. On the left-hand side it gives you a bunch of different options, but I like to leave it on Auto. Then you go over to Browse. Select all the files you want to stitch together by clicking and holding down the shift key simultaneously. You should see your scan file names in the center and once you press OK it'll now do its automated function to stitch them together. This function is great if you have a drawing that is too big for the size of your scanner. And a great best practice tip is to do a bit of an overlap on each of the scans so that the program has an easier time understanding where it can create a seam. When we go over to our layers panel, you'll see that Photoshop has automatically created two different layers with masks on them. This is great because it'll allow us to refine the stitched area later if there are any possible spots that we're not happy with. Photo Merge will also retain the original resolution that your image was scanned at, so you can also adjust this here at this point if you want to, but I'm going to leave it at 800 dpi for the sake of this tutorial. The Photo Merge function does a really great job of stitching two images together. However, sometimes at the seam area there can be a little bit of blurring. At this point I like to zoom in close to the drawing and check the seam. If I see any blurring I'll go back in and mask in or out some of the areas. This will help me ensure that the entire scan drawing will be sharp when it goes to print. If you're not familiar with layer masks, the general rule of thumb is that white reveals and black conceals. You also want to make sure that in your palette you're either on black or white depending on what you want to do, and in your layers panel that you're actually selected onto the layer mask. Once I'm happy with my refined stitched area, I like to have a look around on all areas of the drawing to make sure that nothing is out of place and none of the lines have misaligned anywhere. In this next step, I'm going to show you how to edit and clean up your drawing using the clone tool. The first step we want to do is put our two scanned layers into a folder, name that folder, and then lock it so that no other changes can be accidentally made to them. We're then going to create another layer, call it clone layer, and then we're going to select our clone tool. Go up to the top and select current and below. This is very important because this step won't work without that setting. Holding down the Option or Alt key on the Mac, you want to select a white area, and then I'm just going to paint in. You can change your brush shape or hardness in your paintbrush panel, and then I'm just going to clean up some of the edges where I accidentally kind of went over with some of my colored pencil. It's always a little bit unnerving seeing your drawing at this magnification, especially because Obviously, depending on what size you're working on, you're not normally going to see some of these issues, but in the event that you're scanning a drawing to make prints of it and there's potential that the prints will be made larger than what the original size was, it's important to just make sure that any little errors are taken care of. I'm now going to go in and create another layer and drag it to the very bottom of my layers panel. I'm going to select the white of the background, use the paint bucket tool to then fill in the entire image. This will fill in the blank areas where you saw that checkered pattern from where the image was moved around to be stitched. I can now refine the crop of the image by pressing C or clicking on the crop tool and just bringing in the corners to whatever size that I want to make my drawing. You can also do this by going to 
the image menu at the top and selecting canvas size, but this will give you a more accurate crop, especially if your image is a little bit off center. We're now going to save this image by going up to File, Save Edge, select a location, and we're going to save it as a Photoshop file or a PSD with our layers turned on. You can save your file at any point during this process, even right before you start, and in fact it's probably a good idea just to make sure you don't lose any of your work at any point. We're going to go back to the first document we created at the beginning of this tutorial, and we're going to place our scan drawing in as an embedded smart object. If you don't know what smart objects are, I'll create another video to explain those. They're a real time saver and really handy, especially when you're dealing with resizing multiple versions of the same image. Embedding also keeps this placed object within this Photoshop file and you don't have to worry about a missing link. This is just one way of resizing a document to be the size that you want it to. I like doing it this way because it's the most non-destructive method of creating an image at a different size. You can also adjust your canvas size, but again, this way it allows me to move it around and not have to worry about actually adjusting the original size of my illustration. Now for those of you wondering, it is possible to also do this manually without using the automated photo merge function. However, it does take a little bit longer, and if you have a more complicated image or more than two pieces to scan, it can get a little bit complex. The advantage of using the automate function is that it does it really, really quickly and also will intelligently find the areas that it needs to match up. Whereas sometimes when you're doing it on your own, there can be certain spots that don't line up and you can end up encountering more issues. It is possible, however, to do it and requires using some opacities. And again, you're still using layer masks for this as well. But I just like using the automated function because I feel like it goes a lot quicker. And if you're anything like me, you probably don't have a lot of time on your hands and you're trying to just make sure you're doing things as quickly and efficiently as possible. And like I said, the automate function takes a lot of the guesswork out and I still have to do some refining, but a lot less than I would if I had to do it on my own. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like it and leave me a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much for watching. You can find me on all of my social channels at Art, and I'll see you next time.